Hello guys and welcome back to another video of Between the Ropes TV. Now guys, today we've got a very special guest, um, none other than Dimitri Salita. Dimitri, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on. And now obviously, um, you know, guys, Dimitri Salita is a um, former fighter. Now he's a um, boxing promoter and he's promoting some of, you know, the big names within boxing. But let's get straight into it. What was um, your earliest memory of boxing? My earliest memory of boxing, well, there were several, but first was walk, watching the Rocky movie back when I was, you know, that's uh, Soviet Union, now Ukraine, Rocky IV. But my real uh, uh, boxing memory was walking to Stereo City Boxing Club in 1995 on a, on a hot summer day. Stereo City Boxing Club was located in the basement of a parking garage in Stereo City, which is not the nicest area in Brooklyn. And it was very hot. And there was lots of very talented fighters. And immediately I felt like a kid in a candy store, completely captivated by the atmosphere. And I uh, uh, felt like this, was, this is a journey that I want to embark on to be a champion. So that was, yeah. that was, that was my earliest boxing memory. And, and on that day, I met Jimmy O'Farrell, known oh. as Jimmy O, who uh, was the director of Stereo City Boxing Club, who immediately noticed me and gave me attention and who I felt connected to. And, uh, and the rest is history to those that know. <laughs> and um, from obviously the first time, you just alluded there to when you first walked into the boxing gym. Do you recall um, like your first um, sparring session or session? You know, how, how, how were you feeling? Or did you kind of pick up on it later on where you thought, you know what, I could actually do this as a career? I do remember my first sparring session. It was with Curtis Stevens. Uh, who uh, fought for world title, became a top-rated contender. I was, my first fight was at 95 pounds. He was at 90 pounds. He was a little bit younger than me. And to this day, fight or sparring, he's the hardest puncher I've ever been hit by. So very tough, rough, skilled kid. Curtis may have been a national champion by then. So it was, it was, uh, it was boxing by fire, as they would say. So really from the very beginning, very intense level of competition, very hard boxing. Every day for me was, you know, survival. And, uh, you know, it, I'm grateful for those experiences because it uh, made me into the fighter that I was. And now as a promoter, gave me lots of knowledge and lots of experiences that I feel are very helpful to me today in my boxing business and in, in my relationship with fighters. And, uh, you know, and I feel like this is just the beginning. Lots of great things to come. But those early days and those years at Stereo City Boxing Club, in the hotbed of New York boxing, around Zeb Judah, Shannon Briggs, Monty Barrett, Louis Colazzo, Danny Jacobs, Saddam Ali, Travis Sims. I mean, the list goes on and on. It was uh, really incredible for me. And, uh, you know, someone today, today, someone tagged me, sent me a reel from what happened at the Dillian White press conference where he pushed me. And I pushed him back. And, you know, I make a choice to wear this. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, I could wear a hat or I could not wear it at all and no one would ever know, but I make a choice to wear this uh, because that's the reason why my family immigrated to the United States. Uh, and uh, so, and people are commenting all these, all these things, man, all these things, negative things that they never met me. They don't know about my journey. And it's, uh, it's quite something. But again, in being in Stereo City Boxing Club, just about three, four years after arriving to the United States and uh, getting the guidance from Jimmy O'Farrell, who was an African-American older man who was born on a ship coming from Ireland to the United States, uh, grew up during a very challenging time, uh, segregation in the United States, and told me about all that and really inspired me and strengthened me. And I little did I know that I would have to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of challenges myself, uh, you know, many years later. So God bless Jimmy. He's, he's, uh, um, he's gone to, his, to, to the make of the world, but I'm very grateful for those very early experiences and the people that were involved in my life. Yeah, no doubt. Um, obviously being around the, the names that you've just mentioned, of course, it's only going to mold you into, you know, building, building you up as a person, but obviously fast forward, you know, obviously you had quite a successful, career in the ring and now obviously we know what you're doing out of the ring as a promoter but let's just go back to your fighting days what would you say 
is your standout moment whilst you were fighting in your boxing career? Uh, well, there are several. Uh, I feel like in, in my amateur career, winning the U.S. Nationals uh, at 18 years old was was really significant for me. It was a time that I decided not to box on on the on the Sabbath. So at first I was disqualified, and then USA Boxing changed the time for me. Then winning the Golden Gloves and getting the Sugar Robinson Award as the outstanding boxer was quite awesome. Winning my first title. Uh, being walked into the ring by Montesiago, who was a recording star, then uh, fighting at the guard at the at the Big Garden, and winning several titles there. So uh, and fighting Amir Khan, and even though it wasn't what I anticipated it to be, it was still an incredible experience for me to be able to experience many of those things and and get to that level, even though it didn't go as we planned. But again, it was a great experience, and I'm very grateful for those memories and what came of it and what came of it is 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 the boxing business that i'm in now because uh it is after that fight that i started to promote fights for myself and i saw a need for it with local talent and uh, here we are yeah that brings us perfectly onto the next question um obviously we know obviously you had that fight with amir khan it didn't really quite go the way you know you planned for it to go but nonetheless you still managed to pave um, quite a successful career within promoting. Now, obviously, you're promoting. You're promoting some big names: Clarissa Shields, Jermaine Franklin of recent. You know, he burst onto the scene in his fight against Dillian White the other week. So, you know, you've had quite a successful um, career as a promoter as well. Now, that brings me on to my next question: As a promoter, what would you say has been the standout moment of your career to date? I think the standout moment has been recognizing Clarissa Shields as a who has great potential. And being able to work with her from the beginning of her career, having the first fight that we were together, which was her second professional fight, be the main event on Showtime, and be uh, at MGM Grand Detroit, also also premier venue, first time they had professional boxing. Signing Clarissa and working with her, I would say, is the most significant moment of my career because Clarissa, to me, is a generational athlete, and. Uh, 10, 20, 30 years from now, she's going to be remembered like Muhammad Ali, Pele, Michael Jordan, the great athletes. But Clarissa maybe is a little bit more because she's using boxing as a bridge to, to affect social change, most importantly, women's empowerment that she's doing through her success in the ring. So I read about Clarissa in a paper before 2016 Olympics and uh, recognized that this is out of the Olympics men woman heavyweight lightweight this is the best fighter coming out of that coming out of those games and uh, was fortunate enough to to have uh, signed her and work with her and uh, every fight that we've been together has been amazing and and historic and the last one was savannah marshall incredible victory highest watched women's sporting event on sky ever not just boxing i guess tennis whatever sports they show on sky highest watched event, which is really incredible. And the second highest watched event, men or women, since 2014. So means that she's a superstar um, and uh, big things for her in the future. Yeah, no doubt. Honestly, um, Clarissa Shields, she's done some amazing things. The resume speaks for itself. You know, I'm two-time Olympian. She's won um, the, the titles in different weight classes, undisputed. She had that big fight um, against um, Savannah Marshall recently. And so, no doubt, I can understand why that would be your standout moment. Now, obviously, we know this year has been, for me, quite a successful year for the fighters that you look after in, in, your, in your stable. Like we just mentioned there, Clarissa Shields, she had that fight against Savannah Marshall. You know, they broke all the headlines earlier this year. Jermaine Franklin burst onto the scene against Dillian White um, two weeks ago in what could be what a lot of people viewed as a controversial decision. A lot of people had you know, Jermaine Franklin may be nicking it or, you know, they didn't quite agree with the scorecards. Now, building off from a successful year for yourself and your team that you manage, that you look after, what would you say the plan is for your stable for the next 12 to 18 months? Well, Clarissa is going to have significant fights, which we're working on. I'd love for her to fight in the Middle East. I'd love for her to fight in Africa because I feel like for her, all that she represents as an athlete, they'll be very powerful. Jermaine 
should rightfully have a rematch with Dillian White. I believe that that would be most appropriate. Otto Whalen would love for him to fight Tyson Fury. Jarrell Miller, for him to get back into the mix with the top heavyweights because he's proven that he's uh, paid his dues and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get him back in the ring against the top guys. Shoji Connor Gashev, top rated junior and Walter Waite, uh, hopefully working on getting him a, t- uh, a shot at the title. Ali Ismailov, a fighter that you may not have heard of before, but he's rated top 10 uh, in the light heavyweight division. Extremely talented. I believe the best light heavyweight in the world. He's only 9-0. And, oh. and uh, this year, I hope uh, that boxing fans will have a chance to really see what he's like. And uh, wanting to get my own network deal because that will help me expand my, my uh, talent roster and uh, uh, help me to... Uh, uh, yeah, to progress the ones that I have, which is which is a very important missing link in the progress of my company. Yeah, to no, be- definitely. I feel as though that is probably the next sort of transition for yourself, obviously, building off from what has been a successful year. That is probably the next step to obviously maybe get a TV, TV deal or something in place. But obviously, we do look forward to seeing, you know, the, pro- the progression that the promotional company makes within the next year. Now, just um, I just wanted to ask, um, what would you say is probably a daily challenge that you face as a promoter? So, you know, I just want to say next week we have two fighters fighting on Showtime on PBC. Vladimir Shishkin fighting for an IBF eliminator and Nikolai Potapov also fighting for an IBF eliminator. Both significant fights. Shishkin can put, put himself in position to fight Canelo and uh, Potapov can put himself in position to fight Inawi if Inawi doesn't move away. So both big fights for them and, and obviously uh, guys that we've been together with for a significant amount of time. So I work with all the promoters. I work with, as we've seen from my trips in England, first fight was on Sky, second fight was on The Zone. So uh, I'm very happy and grateful for the fact that I have a good rela- working relationships with all the promoters. Uh, you know, Bob Arum was my first promoter. Otto Whalen gave Tyson Fury the hardest fight of his career. That was on ESPN. Uh, Jarrell fought on the zone again. Clarissa fought on Sky, Jermaine just fought Dylan White. So, uh, you know, next week we have shows on Showtime. I just had a show at my own event on Showtime, October 21st. So, but you know, it's like uh, the question is always what came, comes first, the chicken or the egg? So, I, I function on the fact that I'm able to recognize great talent and uh, and, and and work them up to a certain place. I need my own network so that I can be more sure and have uh, more sustained uh, coverage for the fighters that I represent. And what was, as it relates to pay, exposure, and, uh, and all the things, that's a very important factor in, in, uh, in the next step. Yeah, no, 100%, I agree. Well, obviously, just wanted to touch on um, Otto, Otto Berlin. Obviously, we saw that there was... Um, there's been talks recently, like news has emerged that there's talks of a potential fight against Anthony Joshua. Um, how do you think he would fare in that in that fight against AJ, considering you know AJ coming off the two back to back losses? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, meaning that I like all those chances. Both of them want to fight Tyson Fury. Otto has the right claim because he gave the hardest fight of his career. Uh, AJ, obviously, huge fight in the UK. If you were to beat Otto, more impressive than Tyson, that sets it up. But uh, you know, uh, I don't know what what I don't know what uh, Anthony Joshua who who what's left of him. Maybe he's better, maybe he's worse. He's looking for another trainer. Don't know how that's going to affect him. So all of these things are uh, are big question marks. And I don't know, you know, I really believe that because I pretty much have a deal with Eddie that we discussed everything, and we're pretty much agreed, more or less. I mean, it's just a you know, matter of a, maybe an hour of conversation. But I really believe that the decision is up to Joshua. And, uh, you know, and that depends on how he mold with his trainer and what, you know, what, what, what he feels like. He did fight the last uh, two fights with Southpaws. Yeah. Um, so, um, so maybe, you know, maybe, maybe he won't feel auto. Maybe he'll want to put himself back in a position, in the elite position, with the top tough fights, maybe he will, maybe he won't, but we certainly have to make a push forward, and that's what I'm doing. And uh, you know, I know that 
Eddie throwing names around Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, and Dylan White. Although Dylan White does not deserve to fight Anthony Joshua next because he's he's what is he two and four something like that in his last fight or something something a, lo a losing yeah. record. He's coming but, off a few losses. Yes. Yeah. So so we'll see how uh, how Team Matchroom is serious about Joshua getting fighting those big names based on the opponent that he chooses next. So you know if it has to be someone legitimate in my opinion, even if it's not Oro. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, obviously, bringing on to my next question, obviously we know the difficulties that, that can occur in boxing, especially for young up-and-coming fighters, maybe, you know, with promotional situations, etc. What advice would you give to um, young fighters who, you know, they're looking for promoters to sign with? You know, they're at that they're at that stage where they've gone through the amateur system and they're looking for someone to sign with. So, first of all, you know, guys, a lot of people come to me to turn pro. I... The guys that should turn pro are only guys that are elite guys, that are national champions, have international experience, or professionals that have proven themselves. Boxing is a very hard sport, and I only advise those that have the skills to 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 go to the highest of levels to turn professional, because it's a very hard way to make a living. And it's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work, a lot of missed meals, missed drinks, missed everything. So you have to be really dedicated and have, this, have the talent and desire to, to excel. With that being said, obviously you have to read your contracts and you have to have a lawyer to read those contracts. You have to look at the at the promoter's backtrack and see what he's done in the past. Look at the different fighters, what he's done with them, different opportunities, different fights. And then there has to be some kind of a personal relationship, a personal connection, if you will, um, that, uh, that always helps. And that's very important as time goes by because, you know, uh, you want to trust and, and and have a relationship with the, with the guy that you're working with. Yeah, no, definitely. And just to just to close off, you know, the last question that I want to throw at you, give me three fights. It could be across any of the weight classes, men or female, three fights that you feel we must see and how they end. Crawford Spence. I pick Crawford as the favorite. Although Jerron Ennis may be the best Walter Wade in the division. I, I would have to actually pick him against both Crawford and Spence. He's a really good fighter. He's very talented. Untested yet, but I believe yeah. that he has the skills to pay the bills at the highest level. Tyson Fury versus Usyk is a fight that we have to see. Big one. And uh, Davis versus Garcia. A big one. And Can Canelo versus Benavides is another one that I'd love to see. Uh, those, are, those are the fights that would, that would uh, invigorate and maybe Andrade versus uh, Andrade, Demetrius Andrade, I see he's making a comeback, uh, versus Charlo, one of the Charlo twins. That'd be a big one too. So, so yeah, so there's a lot of fight. There's a lot of fights that uh, that that can be made, and that and that the boxing fans would be very excited to see. Anthony Joshua, Otto Whalen would be an interesting fight. Dylan White versus Jermaine Franklin, I believe that's the biggest fight for both guys. Uh, Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua would be a great fight. Deontay Wilder versus Jarrell Miller would be an interesting fight. J Actually, Jarrell Miller versus Anthony Joshua, the redo, would be a great one. That would be great. Uh, mm -hmm. That would get a lot of interest. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, maybe Jarrell Miller. Yeah, we, we got to get Jarrell back in the play. And I think the boxing world will benefit from his personality and his skills. And I've spoken to him, and I've seen him, and I see him in the gym. He's rededicated himself, and is really looking forward to, to, uh, to making it back on top. No, that's it. Um, well, how do you think Jerome Miller would fare against Anthony Joshua if that fight were to happen? I think that uh, Jerome has all the tools to be successful in that fight. Whether he will be or he won't be is up to him. But I think that I felt that Jarrell, you know, was going to win June 1st, 2019. And I believed, which is what I said at the press conference, that when Anthony Joshua is thousands of miles away from home, in the locker room, in Madison Square Garden, finding a guy like Jarrell, who's the guy that gets into your mind and who is very aggressive, that, um, that, that he's going to have a change of heart. He's going to have a little doubt. And we saw it happen, unfortunately, not with Jarrell, but with uh, uh, with Ruiz. So 
I, I believe that that uh, Jarrell has the possibility to do it again. Nah, well, there you go, guys. We've heard it from Dimitri Salita. Plenty more content to come. Stay tuned. But I do want to say, are we done? Nah, carry on. No, yeah, I do want to say that I met Anthony Joshua at the, at the Dillian Y fight. I actually met him before during Jarrell. He seems like a really nice and pleasant guy. Honestly, truly seems like a nice guy. Uh, and uh, and I think a credit to the sport because I think he lives a clean life. And and I looked at his Instagram page. He gives back to the community, does stuff with kids in his in his town. So I, I like him. Um, and Tyson Fury, I know more extensively. He's an amazing guy, truly a people's champion. And it's good to see Otto, salt of the earth, also amazing guy. It's good to see elite heavyweights that are good people and that recognize their role and their position and the influence that they have over others, particularly over the youth, and use that role responsibly. So it's good to see that many of the elite heavyweights have that in place. So good. And hopefully those the fights between all of them will happen. Now, hopefully 2023 is the year we see all these fights happen. Dimitri, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come in on and joining us for this interview. Um, we really appreciate that. And thank you for giving us an insight into, you know, the pro um, working as a promoter within boxing and obviously giving us a little insight into your career as a fighter. Guys, so stay, thank you. Stay tuned, guys, and join us for the next one. All right, man. Thank you, yeah?